office, workspace, studio. It's just a word, but it represents a space that for years we've been taught is the place you leave home to go to work in, where Monday mornings begin and we wait for the weekend to come. But why can't this space be a home? Why can't we enjoy going to work? I'm an animator, a full-time YouTuber, Twitch streamer, a gamer, teacher, an independent content creator, an artist. I've been working from home since I left DreamWorks about three years ago to build this YouTube channel, to travel, and to try new and unexpected things. I've moved around and built other spaces that you've probably seen in past apartments. In this week's episode, I wanna show you my setup, why I use what I use, and how it helps me to stay focused, work faster, and just make cooler stuff. Do you need a bunch of fancy tech to create? Of course not. But everything I use is a tool with a specific purpose to improve my process or make my workflow more efficient. So let's begin. The first step to set up an inspiring workplace, build the desk. No, not that one. Never that one. See that chair? I don't want that. No one does. Look how uncomfortable. My back still hurts from that setup. We can do better. A standing desk is better. Mine is from Uplift Desk, the Curve Corner V2. Three legs for maximum stability. Go commercial for the crossbeam or leave it be for the hammock. Three guesses which one I chose. A curved edge for comfort and more space than a standard desk, but not too much of an L desk that I use the excess room for clutter. You know what I'm talking about. The keypad saves my profile so one touch and I can switch positions. Alternate throughout the day to increase energy, improve productivity, and a little bit of weight loss. And that's not just some website statistics or something. That's stuff I've actually noticed since upgrading. Floor mat for standing, a sweet chair for sitting, and a stool for that in-between zone when you want a little bit of both. I use two PCs in my setup, but I'm gonna come back to that in just a second. So what's on the desk? Three monitors mounted for space-saving flexibility and specific purposes for each one. I love ultra-wide monitors to keep giant timelines and multiple windows on the same screen whenever possible. This is my main display, which I'd like to upgrade for a better gaming experience in the future, but I really also like this LG Super Ultra Wide I have, but currently it's too heavy for the monitor mounts I'm using. I do all my 3D work with a stylus on the Cintiq. The arm keeps the position ergonomic and fluid. The vertical monitor is great for Discord, After Effects layers, and reading live stream chat messages, anything tall that involves a lot of reading. Two mice, depending on the mood. A vertical mouse for ergonomics and long hours, and a gaming mouse for, well, gaming. I don't like wires, so this mouse pad charges the mouse wirelessly. I'm a fan. By the way, links to everything in this video down below. Let's get into gadgets. Basic keyboard, my old one wore out, and this does the job just fine. Arcade console buttons for hotkeys. I use these to edit videos and speed up my graph editor workflow in Maya. They make sliders and dials too, but the buttons are my favorite. The GoXLR handles all my audio needs, mixing signals for control, especially while streaming. The sampler works as a soundboard, and the effects panel provides the voices. There's also the GoXLR Mini if you want the sliders, but don't need the rest. I want to save some money on a budget. My primary camera is mounted to my desk, so it follows when I change heights. I use it in my YouTube videos and my Twitch streams. Secondary camera for this angle, top-down shots or whatever. Since it's on the Elgato Flex Arm, I can pretty much move it and do whatever I need. Other Elgato products that I'm using are the standard and extra large stream decks. Both have little screens to make hotkeys super easy. You don't have to remember any of it. You create folders within folders and customize however you work best. If you work in Maya, Blender, 3ds Max, Cinema 4D, Houdini, any Adobe product, etc., think of all the time you can save. Anything that takes more than a click or two, these are a game changer. They work with my key lights for one touch lighting, which is always consistent because I use blackout curtains to make sure no outside light can mess up the shot. Whether it's cloudy, if it's sunny, if the light changes while I'm filming, or if it's 3 a.m. and completely dark, doesn't matter. The lighting is always the same and easy to color correct. RGB lights, super fun, adds a lot of color, a lot of personality, and I got these beams to try out. Still on the fence about how I feel about them though. The YouTube microphone, which sits just out of frame and out of sight, and the podcast mic, which I use on stream and for voiceovers, like this one right now. I hear my voice and everything else happening with audio so I can preview it through my wireless headphones, which come with a spare battery in the base so if they die on camera, I can swap it out and keep listening while recharging the new battery, the OG Oculus Rift. I'll upgrade it eventually if I start actually doing something productive instead of just playing Beat Saber. But, you know, we'll see. My office decor is super fun. Collectibles, artwork, art books, movie memorabilia, the works, anything I'm interested in, a lot of Zelda. This book convinced me to quit my job at DreamWorks, and this one is just my favorite ever. The movie, by the way, not even close. Look on a mask of my boy. This one is signed by Ed Catmull, retired CEO of Pixar, and these books look exactly like VHS tapes. 
I play guitar, or at least I used to play, but I'm trying to get back into it. So these are my guitars and my amp. They look cool on the wall and I like them. My assistant Luna always has a little place to hang out in here and she has her own camera on my stream. A few more notable props are my Shrek statue from my time at DreamWorks, the Photoshop pillow from when I toured Adobe in college, some of my favorite artwork in the background. This Yoshi Lego thing took forever to build, but it was super fun. I still need to do Bowser at some point, but we'll get to that. Gotta have my Gokus, a little more animation stuff, the toothless we've all come to know and love, and my most recent addition, the Infinity Gauntlet. In case you're wondering, it does work. Use it at your own risk. Now, let's take it down for a second and talk computer specs. Computer number one is the ideal solution for animating and working in Maya's viewport. Currently, this is set as my streaming PC. Every video and audio signal ends up here to broadcast when I'm live. I also do a lot of recording on this computer, but PC number two, oh man. Another creation of Puget Systems, this PC is powered by AMD. And by that, I mean that this PC is studio level awesome. I have to work harder to create something worthy of this machine than it has to work to render everything I've ever made up until now combined. Both PCs are running NVIDIA's RTX 2080 Ti's, so whether it's gaming, video editing, 3D modeling and rendering, or my favorite new exploration, real-time rendering in game engines, I'm set no matter what. If you guys are looking for a place to get a PC or looking to learn more about how to build your own computer, check the link in the description for Puget Systems. They rock. But the reason I'm using two PCs is very specific. One partial reason is that because I have a creative PC and a streaming PC, I can do anything I want without sharing resources with my live streams or recordings. This is important because unlike games, creative software wasn't built to share and sometimes things just break or crash horrifically with awful side effects. More importantly, if I'm live streaming, teaching, holding a workshop, whatever, I may be in the little corner with music playing, alerts on screen, I might be blocking the software, can't really tell what I'm doing. Using very intentional placements of these specific capture cards within the two computers, I can output this signal online, but still capture my camera at full resolution and a clean 4K signal from my monitor. Perfect for zooming in without losing detail and tutorials so you guys can see what buttons I'm pressing and everything I do can be repurposed into new content just for you. This is my KVM switch and it took me weeks of research and testing different products to get this one right. I wanted both computers to be able to use my Cintiq at any time with all the functionality at full quality along with switching my mouse and keyboard between machines so I don't need an extra set of inputs on my desk all the time. If you are using a newer Cintiq with multiple computers, this is what you'll want. I've spent years at this point building this studio to be what it is now and I'm super proud of it. I hope it inspires you to try new things, to find a new workflow that works best for you. I'm going to keep building on mine, switching things out, trying new tech, and hopefully reviewing more of it on this channel. The only problem with this office, it's empty now. What? I moved across the country in the last couple of weeks. So if you want to find out why, if you want to see the new office get built up from scratch, to keep learning animation inside me, to try new, exciting, and unexpected things, Hit subscribe, hit the thumbs up button, and I will see you soon for next week's episode. I'm Sir Wade, and thanks for joining me on my studio tour.